So Computer File has made a video entitled Have You Been Pwned? where they talk about how you can actually check the strength of your password, not just statistically, but really just uh, put in the password and actually check if it has been cracked anywhere. And they are using a an API available on the internet. And they also talk about a way in which they send the password so that you don't have to worry about that password being stolen by the ones hosting the API. So, so in today's video, we'll talk about how you can actually create your own algorithm to uh, check that password in a safe manner and make sure that nobody is going to steal it because, well, it's your code and you control the way you send the data. And we'll see how we actually send it so that it's in a safe manner. If you haven't checked out a computer files video, go ahead, it's up top. Uh, please do, it's a very, very informative video. Okay, so let's start. First things first, we need to require uh, two libraries here. So I'm gonna go const. First, we need HTTPS to create to create HTTPS requests. So require HTTPS. And then we're gonna need const uh, crypto to actually use the crypto library inside node, right? So I'm gonna go like this. So the first step of this algorithm is actually to get the uh, hashed password. So our password, whatever it is, we want its hash. And specifically, it's SHA-1 hash. Why do we want its SHA-1 hash? That's because the API here, here's the documentation of the API, specifically says that it accepts SHA-1 password hash and it's five characters on that. So it makes sense that we actually have to hash it. So we're gonna have here hashed password. That's where we're gonna store it. We're gonna use the crypto library. So I'm gonna say crypto dot create hash first. That sort of creates an object for us. That's how you use this API. And here we have to pass in the algorithm. So here's where SHA-1 comes in handy, right? Next, we have to actually pass in the password we want to hash using the update method. So I'm gonna do update. I'm gonna use an example, just pass one here. And then we're gonna have to digest it. So basically get the end result with uh, a hexadecimal format because that's how we have to pass it to the API and it's easier to just deal with, with it this way. And then I'm gonna also do a final step, just convert it to uppercase. Now, if I try to console log this, so hash password and run it, you'll notice I actually get uh, the hash of the pass one uh, password without any sort of salt, right? So just a plain old SHA-1 uh, hashing. The next step is to actually get the URL that we have to call to to get uh, our lists of all matches, right? So to do this, it's not that difficult. We have to go to their website and first copy basically everything aside from the specification here. So we know it's a get uh, request and we know we have to pass in this. I'm gonna store this in an API call variable here. And since we also need the prefix of our hashed password, we're gonna store it in a variable. So here we're gonna say let uh, prefix equals hashed password dot slice, of course. And here I'm gonna go zero to five. So I'm gonna get the first five characters basically uh, of this uh, hashed password. And then we can just uh, string interpolate this prefix here. And this is basically our API call. So the next step would be to actually uh, make the actual call. We have the API call, we just need to get the data now. So using HTTPS, uh, the HTTPS library, we can use the get method here because it, it is a get request that we have to do. First is the API call, the actual URL that we have to send. And second is actually a callback. We don't actually get access to promises here. So we have to use callbacks. I'm gonna use here an anonymous function, say result. And the first thing we have to do is actually set the encoding to uh, the result. So we're gonna say res.set encoding UTF-8, if I can spell pr properly. It's a bit of a rudimentary uh, library, but it's going to work for our purposes here. The, the next step is to actually get the data. Now, the problem is with this API, we're gonna get them in chunks. So we first have to um, sort of collect them in a sort of string or something. So I'm gonna have here a variable that says uh, hashes, right? And it's going to be first an empty string. And in here, I'm gonna co uh, concatenate every single uh, chunk I get. And to get the chunks, what we have to do is just res.on. And here we can say the first parameter is what 
like it's a it's sort of a handler like in jQuery if you remember we have uh, on whatever event and I want on uh, data whenever I were receiving data we want to here's a callback where we get the actual chunk we want to concatenate our hashes uh, results so here I'm gonna just say hashes plus equal chunk right and then once we get all the chunks so we're gonna say res dot on and we're gonna actually uh, process these hashes to see if we find our password there. So, well, to do this, I'm gonna use an actual a named function here. So on and that's going to do our uh, the work for us, right? Because we actually have our hashes right here, so we can actually process it here. But before we do that, let's also uh, actually do an on error just in case we get an error here. I think. That's just good practice. I'm gonna do console.error. I'm gonna say um, error and then just interpolate our error that we're gonna pass in here. Okay, so this guy also gives us an error if something happened to the API call. All right, so now once this is called, we know that this hashes, this hashes string is uh, complete. We got the whole result. So now all we have to do is actually process the data. We know that after uh, this is called, we actually get the hashes complete, right? We get all the chunks in there, all the data is in there, but as a string. So if I try to, for example, console log this, so console log hashes, right? If I run this, you'll notice we get a long list of hashes but it's just a string. So we have to actually process it inside an object. And we also have to add the prefix to it because uh, if you notice inside the documentation, it says that the API will respond with an HTTP 200, include the suffix of every hash beginning. So everything besides the first five characters. So that to, uh, I guess, not use too much bandwidth for no reason, right? Because it's going to be the same. So, we're gonna have to do many things. First, split so that we get every single hash as an object of, let's say, the actual hash and the count. And we have to prefix the hash with our actual uh, prefix that we have passed here. So to do this, first we have to split. So I'm gonna do hashes.split at, and here is just backslash r backslash n. So that's, that's what it's using to, uh, distinguish between hashes. And then we get an array of strings. Basically just every single string in here is going to be uh, in there, but we want to do more than just that. We want to actually get uh, an object. So to do that furthermore, we have to call the map function here. So I'm gonna go map for every single H, we're gonna do, well, two things. First, we're gonna split it. So I'm gonna say H dot split, since we know that H is just any one of these, right? So just one of this or one of this. Uh, then we can just split at a colon. And then we can return a new object that says, let's say, uh, hash as our hash, so sp of zero and count. So how many uh, times it uh, got this match. So here, for example, we got one, two, three, and so on. So we can do uh, count sp of one, but I'm going to also parse into this so that we get a proper result. All right, and as I said, we also have to prefix our result here. So this hash is not complete, it's just the suffix of our uh, password. And that's fine, but we might want to actually play with this array. So we might as well get the whole data there. So we can just say prefix plus sp of zero. Uh, right, now that that's finished, we can now take the results, so let's say result equals that. So if I try to console log this, we should get a an actual result that says, there we go, every single hash. So it's an object. It's an object of every single hash here as a string and it's count, like how many times uh, we got a match for. Okay, so that's really nice. Now what we have to do is simply do a search for it, right? All we have to do is say, uh, let, let's say found equals, well, our result dot find that hash. Now remember those are objects. I'm gonna have to say 
h dot dot hash is our password our hashed password so if that's a match we want to actually find it otherwise this is going to return undefined so we can simply we can simply just say if found right so if if this is not undefined we want to just console log let's say found found dot count since this is also an object matches right password vulnerable all right and otherwise then it's all okay so console.log no matches found and that's about it if we try to now run this so i'm gonna just clear the screen as you can see we got 45,634 uh, matches for our pass one password, right? So that's that's fine. But what we want is to actually pass in our password. Sure, we can actually just change this to well, let's say password two three one two three four. And if we try to run this again, it's going to work and give us different uh, amount of matches. But what we want is to pass this as a command argument, command line argument. So we can do something like process process dot argv of and here we have not zero because zero is the path of our node executable not one because one is actually our uh, js that we're executing so two is going to be our uh, argument here and if we now run this with let's say pass one you'll notice we get matches and if we actually try to do let's say password one i think that's the one that they used in the video you notice we get a hundred and eleven thousand matches wow and that's about it i'm going to leave you with a paste bin of this snippet of code it should work on most machines and uh, if you have any questions or suggestions or really optimizations to this code feel free to leave them down in the comments below i i know that this is not the most perfect code ever and if you find some errors, please do tell me I'm going to actually update everyone on it if need be. Right. I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you next time. Take care. Bye.